Jesus. Back in 12-22-02, I preached this message. That's 14 years ago. Time flies by real quick. Amen? Real, real quick. And some would say, well, we don't want no stale bread. We want something that's fresh. I want to tell you something. You can't, you can't exhaust the Christian message in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And as I went through some of the notes, hear me, I don't go by my notes all the time. Hear me, I, I just use it as a reference. But we allow the Holy Spirit just to flow down through us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say this, make room for Jesus. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, make room for the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. But we here at Harvest Field, hear me, every, every year we celebrate the, uh, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we celebrate that by singing happy birthday to Jesus because he's what it's all about. Amen. So let's just do that right now. Can we do that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Hallelujah. Glory. You know, Christmas, is, it just simply means a mass of religious uh, services to honor the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every year we do, we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as I said before, not just today, hallelujah, but we celebrate Him as Lord and Savior 365 days a year. Please understand something. When we leave this church, look at me, Jesus don't stay in this church but He goes with me home and He goes with you home if you've invited Him into your heart and into your life. Bless the Lord. But what I want to do this morning, hallelujah, I want to present a message to you this morning, not some dead, stagnated Christmas message. Hello. But I want to make Christ come alive, and I can't do that. Make Christ come alive in your Christmas. The only way that that can happen is the Holy Spirit Anoint the message, hallelujah, and drive it into your spirit to make Christ come alive in the name of the Lord. I believe everyone that's born again, look at me, you ought to have a smile on your face. Your shoulders ought to be squared back. And my God, you ought to have a spring in your step. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm born again. I'm born again. Christ, hear me, is living. He's real. And He lives in my heart and in my life. Praise the Lord. And we're a testimony of the living power of God Almighty. He came into the world, hear me, to, to, to save lost humanity. And I was one of those. You was one of those. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad mercy came down to you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I didn't deserve it. You didn't deserve it. But you know what? God loved us so much, hallelujah, that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise God forevermore. Can I tell you this? The Lord said, Terry, I've called you by name. Child, you belong unto me. Hallelujah. And can I tell you, I opened up my heart's door and I said yes to Jesus. And Jesus came in and lived inside of me. That's been 44 years ago. He's still there. Are you hearing me? He hasn't, he hasn't left me. He hasn't made me destitute. But my God, He's still living and ruling and reigning off the throne of my heart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. For generations, you know as well as I do, Christmas has been so commercialized that we forget what the reason of, uh, for the season is. Amen? We forget what the reason is. And, and, you know, we need to put Christ back in our Christmas. Instead of Xmas, it's christ Mass. Christ and a mass of people. Hallelujah. That's what, it, what it's all about. It seems like our, you know, Christ is X out of everything. Christ has been X out of our nation. And hear me, this nation is nothing but an anti-Christ world system. But thank God there are believers. Hallelujah. They aren't anti-Christ, but they are Christ. Hallelujah. Soldiers of the cross of Calvary in the name of the Lord. Why? Because Jesus Christ is real. 
in their lives in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But understand, hear me. The world might X Christ out, but don't you as a Christian X Christ out. Did you hear that? The world might exit out, but don't you as a Christian X Christ out. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, it seems like the enemy of our soul would desire to get every one of us so caught up in the commercialism of Christmas, hear me, that we don't make no room for Jesus. And you know what? The Lord gives us a warning in Deuteronomy. Listen to what he says in Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 12. Listen to this. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which, which he has swore unto your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you a great and goodly, give you great and goodly cities, which you built not, and houses full of all good things, which you filled, which you filled not, and wells dig, which you didn't dig, vineyards and olive trees, which you didn't plant. When you are eaten and full, here's the beware, caution part here, look at it. Then beware, lest you forget the Lord, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Hear me. We can get so caught up in the blessings of God that we forget about God. Did that make sense? I certainly believe that there are many Christians got caught up in their blessings and forget about the one that gave them the blessings. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We need to put our focal attention upon the blesser and not the blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. With that in mind, I want you to look at Luke, the second chapter, 1 through 7. Luke, the second chapter, 1 through 7. Listen to what it says here. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went, uh, went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. Now look at this part here. Because there was no room for them in the end. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the word of God that's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you, Lord, for quickening your word to our spirit, souls, and bodies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said amen and amen. Let's read that last part one more time, the seventh verse. Because there was no room for them in the inn. How many know the Bethlehem, uh, the Bethlehem Inn, it was no five-star rated motel. You know what it was? It was nothing but a roof over your head, had walls, look at me, and, and, and uh, it kept the rain out. It wasn't nothing that was immaculate. But hear me, uh, we see here in these scriptures that the innkeeper, Joseph and Mary, went to these, the innkeeper and he said, well, there's no room. We have no room at our inn. And uh, so therefore, you know, Jesus, he went and of course, uh, uh, they went to a stable and Mary ended up having her babe. But understand something, hear me. When we start to, di uh, to, to dissect the message of this innkeeper and you think, you know, well, you know, he's got a legitimate case. Everything's full, but he's got caught up in the frenzy of making some money. Because everybody's gone there. And hey, his end's clear full. His pockets are full. Amen? Hear me. He gets caught up in the frenzy. Look at me and understand something. He didn't realize or recognize that one of the greatest gifts that God ever gave to mankind could have been born in his inn. Well, some would say, you know, the inn was full. No vacancy. It was filled up. Wait a minute. 
Why not give him his room? Why not give him his, oh, oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I ain't giving up my room. He could have gave up his room and his business could have boomed. Hello. I said all that to say this. Hear me, child of God. Let us not get so caught up in the frenzy of the commercialism and the blessing that we don't have room for Jesus in our lives anymore. Come on, church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a blessing it could have been, hear me, to the innkeeper, but yet his words were, no vacancy. Can I tell you this? How many people across the nation today are saying to Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, no vacancy in my heart. And Christ is reaching out with mercy, with love, and with grace all day long, saying, come unto me, all you that labor and and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest for your souls. But they say, no, we don't need you. We'll just do it on our own. But can I tell you something? Everybody's in need of a Savior. I said everybody's in need of a Savior. That's why Jesus Christ had to come to the face of the earth. He didn't have to do it, but He was willing to do His Father's will. The only way for eternal salvation, hear me, the only way for you to ever make heaven your home is God send forth His Son to this world. Hear me. He had to come down to our level to pull us up to His. Hallelujah. God made flesh. How many know what that's called? The incarnation. Right? The incarnation. John 1 uh, and 1 and, or 1 and 2 and verse 14. Listen to what it says. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. Some would say, but you know, the innkeeper, he didn't have no room. But can I tell you this? There's always room in your heart if you want to make room. Are you hearing me? You see, life is made up of choices. Everybody say choices. You chose to get up and come to church this morning, am I right? You didn't have to. You didn't have to. You could have stayed in bed and watched it over live streaming. Hello. Thank God you're watching. Hear me. We are made up. Life is made up of choices. You either make right choices or wrong choices. One or two. And God only knows how many wrong choices I've made. And guess what? You receive the result of wrong choices. Am I looking at people with halos on their head this morning? I don't think so. I think every one of us at times in our lives look at me that we've, we've made wrong choices and how many's regretted that you ever made that choice. Come on, let me see your hand. Why? Because it brought about wrong choices. It brought about the blessing of wrong, if there is such a thing as a blessing of wrong. Although there can be. You can draw riches out of dark areas of your life. What are those riches of dark areas? What is the blessing of dark areas? Don't do it again, Brian. Don't do it again. Is that a blessing? Yeah. If you keep making wrong choices, wrong choices, wrong choices, wrong choices, you get enough knots on top of your head, you'll start waking up a little bit. And look at me, I don't know about you, but I've got a lot of knots on top of my head before I made Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and King of my life. But thank God He never gave up on me. Hallelujah. And understand something, look at me, I'm not perfected, never will be perfected until this mortal puts off immortality. Hallelujah. And we be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. No, I don't believe in sinless perfection. We will have that when this mortal puts off immortality. Hallelujah. And we have a body fashioned like our glorious Lord and our Savior. But I say this, hallelujah, to the Lamb. 
Thank God on 1118 South Erie Street, bless God, I made room in my heart for Jesus Christ. I said I made room in my heart for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Understand me. Hallelujah. Go out and get drunk. Go out and chew a little bit of dope. Go out and thinking you're having a little bit of fun. How many know that stuff gets old after a while? I was hungry for something deep down on the inside of me. But I heard about Jesus mentally and historically, but I never invited Christ into my heart and my life. And I was always searching for something. Whether it was women, whether it was sex, whether drugs, what have you. Look at me. I was a jock when I was in football. Hello. Hello. Some might not know what that is. But hear me. Understand something. I used to make fun of people that said they were Christians. Used to make fun of them, laugh at them, mock them. But you know what? God could have struck me dead right there in the halls of Delphus Jefferson High School if he wanted to. But think of this. He didn't do it. You know why? Mercy came running. <laughs> some of you here, some watching over, over live streaming, look at me, you're looking for something. There's a void in your life. You're trying to fill it with drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it might be. The only way that void can be filled is that Jesus Christ come into your heart and into your life and fill you to overflowing. And you'll stand up and say, Thank God I found what I've been looking for all these years. It's the Christ child. Is no longer a child but went to the cross of Calvary for Terry Martin's sin. He took my sin upon himself. He took my filthy rags and he gave me his robe of righteousness. And you ask me why I'm so happy? I'll tell you why I'm so happy. My sin's been thrown into the sea of forgetfulness never to be remembered of the Lord any longer. And can I tell you something? I'll not let the past drag me back. But my God, my eyes are set. My goal is set. I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus the Lord. And understand something. People will try to pull you back. You've got to watch who you associate yourself with. Bad associations will corrupt good morals. Well, you're my friends, you know, and we just want to go out with them and just have some good times. Well, there's nothing wrong with them being friends. But I want to tell you something. Hear me. You cannot participate in the things that you once used to be when the Christ child when Christ comes into the heart and into the life hallelujah to the lamb look at me the Bible says I've been born again can I tell you this hallelujah to the lamb I've been born and then I've been born again some would say what that don't even make sense well I was born from my mama look at me I didn't have no choice but to be born I didn't have no say-so in it. I didn't have a choice. Look at me. Nine months later, pop, out I came. (laughs) Glory, glory. But you know what? This second birthday, I had to make a choice. And you've got to make a choice. It's got to be the right choice, hallelujah, to invite Christ into your heart and into your life. And there's only one doorknob, and it's on the inside of your heart. And you've got to turn that knob and open the door and say, Lord, I'm empty. I need you to come in and live in my life. I need you to come in and forgive me. Of all my sins. And wash me clean. Can I tell you that's what Christmas is all about. Christ came into the world to save sinners such like you. But here. The Lord says this. 
Hallelujah. The Lord said that he came to his own and his own received him not. That was a choice. He came to the Jewish people. He came to the religious elite, the scribes, Pharisees, and priests, and lawyers. They mocked and ridiculed him and said, you're nothing but the carpenter's son. We know you. We've been raised around you, and you're proclaiming to be God in the flesh. Oh, boy. And he said, I come to my own, and my own received me not. You see, they had the choice to choose to open up the door for Christ to come in. And can I tell you something? They rejected him. And over in Matthew, hear me, Jesus stands out just before his, his crucifixion. He stands out on the hillside and he said, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would love to come unto you and gather you as a mother hand gathers her chick and brings them under her brood. But you would not let me do it, but another you will accept. What's he talking about? He's saying this, Christ came to his own But his own rejected him. But another, they will accept. What's that another they will accept? Well, there's a man coming on the scene called the Antichrist. And Israel will accept him wholeheartedly. He'll come in, hear me, like a, as a man of peace. Maybe winning the Nobel Peace Prize. Declaring peace and bringing prosperity to the land. But yet, underneath all the facade, hear me, is a man anointed by Satan himself. Look at me. Thank God, I'm not going to be here. (laughs) Hey, I said, thank God, I'm not going to be here. Well, why aren't you going to be here? Because I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And can I tell you, look at me. Great tribulation is coming to the face of the earth such as it's never seen before in its life's history. We're seeing birth pangs of that even now. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. I believe Christ, hear me, seated with the Father, is just about ready. Hear me? The Father's just about ready to say to the Son, Son, the world's not worthy of him any longer. Go get your children, bring them home, and great tribulation falls on the face of the earth. But understand something, you're not going to go on home to be with Jesus if you've not let him live on the throne of your heart. You've got to make room for Jesus. You know what I've discovered over the years of ministry? I've discovered many people, they'll serve Jesus when it's convenient for them. If it's convenient for him, then I'll do it. But if I don't have no time, I'm not going to do it. You see, what they want is a convenient God. Understand something. Jesus Christ's bloodshed on the cross of Calvary is more than just being an inconvenient or an inconvenient God. Hallelujah. He wants to have a one-to-one personal relationship with you and with me. Hallelujah. Understand something. If we're in that rut and we're thinking in those modes, hear me, well, I'll serve God when it's convenient for me. Chances are you'll never serve him. You'll never serve him. But you know what? You'll deceive yourself thinking that everything's all right. The the devil's very good at doing that. Everything's all right. But you know deep down on the inside of you, Somewhere down along the line, you put Christ on the back burner and self on the front burner. But if it's convenient, I'll let Christ go there. But if it's not, me, 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 me. It's me, 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 me. Can I sing it again? It's me, 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 me. I used to be in a choir. Seriously did. You know what? We're state champions. I'm serious. Some said, you mean tell me as a jock and you're in the choir? Yep. Loved it. Had a music teacher and she said, Terry, you're singing from here. Right here. You know what she did to me? She hauled, crawled back and hit me right in the gut. Boom! I'm serious. Like to knock the breath out of me. 
She said, this is where it's got to come from. It's got to come out of here. Me, 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 me. And we used to have to do that. La, 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 la. Coming out of here. (laughs) Hear me. Let's get out of here, all right? (laughs) Now I lost my train of thought. See what you did to me? What was it? Back burner, burner, putting God in the back burner. Thank you, (laughs) Jason. Bless the Lord. That's what notes are, but I didn't go back to the pulpit to get look at my notes. But how many, if it's convenient for us, was serving? Well, brother, brother Martin, we're living a we're living in a a busy society. Well, certainly they had a busy society back in Jesus' day, and God's no kill joy. Hear me. He's not a killjoy. He wants us to have life and life more abundantly. Somebody say glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Look at Adam and Eve in the garden. What did he say? He said you can eat all the trees. Every one of them in this garden. Luscious fruit. Everything. But of this one tree, I don't want you to eat of. Guess where they went to? I'm going to that one tree. And that tree was the tree of good and evil. Understand something. There's some things that might look good, but they are very evil to the spirit and the soul. That's why it's called the tree of good and evil. And the Bible says that when you part, or Jesus said, God said, if the day you partake of that, you will surely die. Have you ever wondered where death come in for a Christian, or death come in for, for people? Why don't we live forever? You know why? Because of what Grandma and Grandpa Adam and Eve did. They didn't die right on the scene. But look at me. Immediately they died spiritually. Spiritually they had no fellowship with God the Father. Think of it. God would come down in the cool of the evening, the Bible says. And he would commune with Adam and with Eve. Wouldn't you love that? I mean, God, come down. Let's sit down. Let's, let's have a talk with God. That was an everyday occasion. But when they ate of that tree and partook of that tree, guess what? They didn't show up at church. And God said, Adam, where you at? Adam, where you at? And can I tell you, the Lord's saying today, Terry, Sue, Bill, Joe, where are you at spiritually? Where are you at spiritually? Understand, they didn't die physically right off the bat, but can I tell you something? They died spiritually right off the bat. And understand, every person is took on that original sin of Adam and Eve. We was born into it called the original sin. And the only antidote for that sin is the precious blood of a spotless lamb. God always required blood sacrifice. We don't talk about the cross of Calvary in our church. It's too gruesome. Well, you don't have people getting born again then. Are you hearing me? Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or no forgiveness of sin. Christ had to shed his blood. And matter of fact, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. A man that knew no sin became the sin sacrifice for you and for me. He atoned. He shed his blood that I might not go into destruction, but come into life and life everlasting. And can I tell you, you don't know what life is until life comes into you and gives you that spiritual life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Am I talking to anybody in here this morning? You see, he's the only one that can give spiritual life. And I've said it many times. Sorry, Oprah, New Age, hear me. I'm sorry, New Age can't give you life. 
How many churches have went into the new age aspect using new age technology? Can I tell you? It won't work. Man's programs fall far short. But the program that God put into effect, the cross of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus and the lifting up of the cross of Jesus Christ will draw all men unto Him in Jesus' name. It's not, bless God, read my latest book. It's not, I got a plan. Hear me? That, that man, you're going to have victory 365 days as long as you go through this book and read the end of it. You're going to have victory. Can I tell you something? You're going to find yourself in bondage because it's something that man produced and not God produced. Only thing that can set men free is the blood of Jesus Christ and nothing else but the blood. Jesus came into the world to save sinners just like you and me. I once was a sinner, but now I'm a saint called by the living God, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus, hallelujah, to the Lamb. Only God can straighten my life out, and only God can straighten your life out. And I've had people say this to me. I don't need my life straightened out. I think everything's fine. You know, I don't think I'm going to heaven. I'm, you know, I'm just as good as that, that person over there. They go to church every week. I'm just as good as them. And you know what? I don't question their goodness. Sometimes there's sinners in the world, they're, they're more, they have more goodness than what saints do. Shouldn't be, but sometimes it is. You find a lot of good people in the world today. People that give and share their hearts, hear me. But understand something. It means nothing to God. The only way, hear me child of God, is not by works of righteousness but by His grace and His mercy alone brings me into the presence of God and writes my name in the Lamb's book of life. It's not if my name's on the membership of Harvest Field, Pentecostal Church of God. Your name might be on the membership, but understand something. Look at me. That means nothing. You can be on the membership and still go to hell. Oh, did I say that? Well, I don't believe there's a hell. I'm sorry, but the Bible does. And those that don't accept Christ, that's where you're headed to. You know, when you do a lot of funerals and you see people and you sit in funerals, people that lived like, like the devil all their life, and then you got some pastor that'll come and say, oh, they're such a godly person. They've been baptized into the church. They're walking the streets of gold now. What a lie from the pits of hell. Someone say, how can you make a judgment? I don't. I just tell you what the judge says in the Bible. Jesus said, lest you be born again, you have no inheritance in my kingdom. Brother and sister, that's very sober thinking. Man, I thought I'd hear about, uh, you know, the angels singing this morning and Hark the herald and all this other stuff. And you're, you're, you're telling me about... Je well, yeah, I'm telling you about Jesus. I'm telling you about the Christmas message. I'm not here for a 15-minute sermonette and go home and fill our bellies up. I'm here for souls. I'm here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and see souls birthed into the kingdom. Whether it's over live streaming in your rooms or your bedrooms or living rooms, I pray to God that you find the... Living Christ in Christmas in your heart. Hallelujah. But you see, we're not here to please people. We're here to carry the mail. Jesus saves. I said, Jesus saves. And I remember, hear me, somebody wrote on the bathroom walls in, in uh, my secular job when I worked at Fruhoff. Somebody scraped in there, Jesus saves. And then someone else wrote underneath of it, S&H green stamps. 
Some of you don't know what S&H Green Stamps was. I, I remember it, but I, I think it was a grocery store that gave them out and you get a bunch off of your, your groceries if you filled a card full of them. Can I tell you this? Jesus didn't come into the world, hear me, to save S&H Green Stamps. He came into the world to have an intimate one-to-one relationship with you. Amen. Period. Amen. Dot. Dash. Everybody say intimacy. One more time. I believe 2017 is going to hold a key for intimacy for God's people. And for those that don't know Christ, hear me, will come into intimacy with the Lord God Almighty. If you hear that word and listen to that word, into me see. What does that mean? It means that God looks into you and sees the sin in your life and says, I've got the antidote for that and I want to cleanse you and wash you and make you clean. Hey! Can I shout just a little bit? I'm going to anyhow if you don't say, well, you know, don't get too radical. I've got something to be radical about. It's time for Christians to get radical about their relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not a time to back up, give up, or shut up. It's a time to proclaim Jesus saves, delivers, and heals, and baptizes in the Holy Ghost. And Jesus is coming again. Hallelujah. It's time to herald the gospel. He's alive again. He's no longer in the tomb. He's alive again. He's no longer in that grave. You know where he's at? He's on the throne of my heart in the name of the Lord. That old song we used to sing back years ago, You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart rejoice rejoice so christian lift up your voice and cheer eternal hallelujahs to jesus christ the king the hope of all who seek him the help of all who find none other so good and kind he lives he lives Christ Jesus lives today. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Shake my hand, Jeremy. You can tell people when they hear me, when they're hooked on the real thing. Shake my hand. Well, isn't God fun? Uh, no. He lives within my heart. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory. He's not just a song that I sing. My God, He's my precious King of kings. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord forevermore. And yes, I'm radical about what I preach on in Jesus' name. Why? Because He's a living God. And wants to have a living relationship with each and every one in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hear me. The innkeeper said, I've got no room. And I ask you and I ask myself, do we've got room for Jesus? Do we got room for Jesus? Some would say, well, bless God, you know, I'm glad to have you in service Sunday morning. See you Easter. But understand me, when Christ comes into your heart, there's a change in your life. Instead of damning God, you're blessing God. You open up the Word of God and you start reading the Word of God. And my Lord, the Word becomes life. Don't the scriptures say in Hebrews, the word is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even the center of soul and spirit, and goes down to the depths of the marrow, the bone? That word quick means come alive. Everybody say come alive. Come alive. 
Ought not his church, the blood-bought, redeemed church of the living God, be a live organism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because Christ is alive today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to praise him. If nobody else praises him, I'm going to glorify him. I'm going to praise him. You know why? Because he's been personal to me. He's been personal to me. And he'll keep being personal until we go on home with the Lord and still be personal. And one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is King of kings and he is Lord of lords. Even if you don't accept Christ as Lord and Savior one day, you will bow a knee to King Jesus and say truly, he is Lord and he is Savior, but it'll be too late. That will happen at the great white throne judgment. We as Christians won't be there. That's the judgment of the damned and doomed. Wait a minute. I heard God is love. Hmm. Well, God is love. Well, if he's full of love, he'd never send me to hell. Where's his mercy? And where's his love? Well, he extended it 2,000 years ago. He gave his son. But you didn't make room for it. Now God don't have room for you. What? Yeah. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Those standing at that judgment, listen to what he'll say. They'll say, Lord, have not we prophesied in your name? Have not we done good works in your name? Have we not glorified you? Everybody say heart motive. They know the heart. The Lord does. Here's the words of the Lord. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Depart into everlasting destruction. Does God send people to hell? Pastor Martin, please, come on. Does he send people to hell? Is there a hell? Well, the modern day church has put... Wet blankets on hell, but can I tell you, it's still steamy hot according to the Word of God. Does God send people to hell? No, you send yourself there because God made a choice, give you a choice. He gave you a free will to accept God and His sacrifice or to reject it. One of the two. Well, if you preach like that, you'll never get on the popular preacher's list. I don't care. 67 years old, been preaching 44 years. I'm not in this for the applause of people. I'm not in this for glamour and for lights. I'm not in this to be on PTL, or it's, I don't think PTL is even on, T, TBN. I'm not in that for this. That's not my calling in life. My calling in life is to reach as many that will listen to this preacher, hear me, hallelujah, and the message that he's got to give to the world, hallelujah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God is reaching out today and saying, come to me. Come to me before it's too late. We don't know when we're going to step off of this earth. Some people think, well, i got plenty of time ahead of me. You don't know. When God says time is no more for you, look at me, time's going to be no more and you'll step into eternity. And I pray to God that you step into eternity knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hear me. O little town of Bethlehem, talking about the Savior, understand me, he's not a babe in a manger and when he comes back again for the second coming, he's coming back with a rod of iron. The time to accept Christ is today. Not tomorrow. Musicians, come back if you would, please. Not tomorrow. Not a month from now. I've heard people say this. You know, well, uh, maybe next year I might give my heart to Jesus. Well, we only got seven days to next year. (laughs) But, What if tonight you take your last breath here on the face of the earth? Where would you be? 
Do you know where you would be? You see, those that have been redeemed, the Bible says we don't have a hope so salvation, or maybe so, but I know so. One of the greatest Bible teachers and theologians on the face of the earth. They, a man asked him, he said, what's the, one of the greatest revelations that you've ever found in the Bible? And he said, John 3, 16. Jesus loves me. This I know. He said, you mean tell me that's the greatest revelation? As being a man of God like that? That's the greatest revelation? That you, you know? And he said, no. This is the revelation. This I know. You see, you've got to know you've got eternal salvation. You've got to know I'm born again. You've got to know Christ lives in my heart. Hallelujah. And the only way that you're going to know that is invite Christ into your heart and He'll give you this Spirit. Hear me, the Holy Spirit. Hear me right instantly when you say no to to flesh and self. Christ comes in, hear me, and instantly puts the Holy Spirit in you and His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're children of the living God. When I give my heart to the Lord in my living room, my brother led me to the Lord at 1118 South Area Street in Delphus. That old house still standing. Every once in a while, I'll go by there and look at it, and I thought, man, the prayer meetings we had in that, Bible studies we had in that house. I'm telling you, we had a rocking place. House used to be filled with people just loving Jesus. But I'll never forget that day or that evening when I knelt down beside my couch with my brother and my brother led me in a sinner's prayer and I'm telling you I was sincere and I said God please forgive me of my sins there are many I'm miserable I'm empty I mean I was putting facades on like really having fun but empty on the inside And I said, please come into my heart and make a new person out of me. Forgive me of all my sins. And can I tell you something? Wham! Instantly! Something happened. The waterworks started flowing. The the tears started streaming down my eyes. And look at me. I was raised. My daddy said, you never cry, son. I don't care if you get busted in the nose. You don't show weakness. You show strength, you don't cry. But can I tell you, I couldn't help but cry on Daddy. He's in heaven today. Because somebody great, somebody miraculously reached down and touched me and melted my heart as wax and came into me and changed me from the inside out. I went down a sinner and came up a saint. And I didn't have a preacher to tell me, you're saved now. Can I tell you this? This is what I said. I come up with both hands and say, thank you, Jesus, with tears streaming down my eyes and snot running down my nose. Hear me. That's gross, Pastor Martin. It might be gross, but there's a lot of devils come running out of me that day. A lot of them. Didn't have no preacher tell me I was saved. You know what? I threw it up both hands and said, Thank you, Jesus. Hear me. And I said, God, please take me on home right now. Just kill me and take me on home. What a prayer. Man, nobody wants to die, you know, at that moment. But man, I'm telling you, I was having heaven on earth. I said I was having heaven on earth. I found what I've been looking for all my life and he was there all the time reaching out to me you ask me what Christmas is all about it's about changed lives and it's about Jesus coming into the heart of maybe the vilest sinner someone say you know 
God can't forgive me. And I've been around people like that. He can't forgive me for what I've done. I said, listen, God can forgive any sin. And if you're watching by television, live stream, internet, God can forgive you of any sin, no matter what. But you've got to be sincere with the Lord. And I say with those in here this morning, you've got to be sincere with God. And when you're sincere with God, look at me, intimacy comes into the heart. (laughs) Hallelujah. And there's a true Christmas of rejoicing on the inside of your spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And you want to tell everybody about the Christ of Christmas. Thank God. He's alive today. And He wants to have intimate relationship with you. But you must make room. Amber, play that song, would you please? Looking down through the ages God beheld